Did you film the Walmart Century ride? Yes, I did. And I must emphasize that it was actually a metric century because I don't absolutely hate myself. That video will be out in about two weeks. This Fix Your Q&A will talk about what I think are the most impactful upgrades, whether high-end hubs matter, and a bit about used bikes as well, plus more coming up. This video is made possible by Wabi Cycles. For complete steel bikes that are well under 20 pounds or 9 kilograms, consider checking them out, linked at the top of the description. What's up? I'm Zach Alardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous, and subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one. Rank the upgrades that one install will make a discernible difference in the way you roll. The number one upgrade that I argue makes the biggest impact on ride quality is handlebars. They completely change your riding position, your aerodynamics, your weight distribution, your handling, and your field of view. In other words, they completely change the way that you ride your bike. Second is tires. A good set of tires can make your bike feel faster and more comfortable and give you less flats. Third is pedal type. The way that you ride and interact with a bike that has platform pedals is completely different from the way you ride and interact with a bike that has something like SPDSLs. Fourth is the saddle. An uncomfortable saddle or even a comfortable saddle that is positioned wrong can make an otherwise great bike unridable. And number five is gearing. If you have spinny gearing or monster track thigh gearing, those two gearings are going to ride completely differently. It's not the sexiest components that we like to drool over that make the biggest impact on ride quality like frame sets, crank sets, and wheel sets. Those are way down the list when it comes to impactful upgrades. It's the unsung heroes of the bike, the contact points that make the biggest difference because that's what you're touching and that's what's touching the road. So those things make the biggest difference. How much better is the ride quality from a great value sealed cartridge track hub versus high-end ones. I made a video that covers this topic and you can watch that here. Basically 99% of riders won't notice a difference in hub quality between a pair of decent seal bearing say formula hubs versus a high-end hub like Phil Woods. What is noticeable is the difference in the wheels build quality, not the hub quality itself. A well-built pair of wheels with formulas will ride very very similarly to an equally well-built pair of wheels with Philwood hubs. The difference in durability and ride quality mostly comes down to the wheel builder. With that said, master wheel builders can build slightly better with nicer components. Likewise, a wheel building scrub such as myself will build an equally terrible wheel whether I'm using formula hubs or Dura Aces. With high-end hubs, you're mostly paying for craftsmanship and fixie points, which is totally fine if you can afford it. What do you think of tri bar or clip-on bars for fixed gear long distance touring. As a hipster fixed gear elitist, I personally would never put tri bars or clip-on bars on a fixed gear, just because it feels wrong to me. With that said, an extra hand position, especially one that gives you an aerodynamic advantage, will be noticeably helpful over a long tour. It'll let you duck out of the wind more effectively when you're up against particularly strong headwinds, which is a great advantage on a fixed gear because you can't gear down. Also, just having another extra hand position to switch to can be more comfortable over the long run. I'm gonna respray my fixie. I want a color that stands out, but not too much. What do you recommend? Purple, trust me. Thoughts on Mavic Ellipses. They're overpriced Mike Pistards that use a stupid proprietary lock ring. They do have more fixie points than Mike Pistards, so there's that. If you had an unlimited budget, what would your dream build be? I know this isn't the answer you're looking for, but I'm not a particularly materialistic person, and I am perfectly happy on Wallace, my Wabi Special, and I have very little to no desire to ride anything else. But to entertain your question, I think full NJS bikes are some of the most beautiful bikes ever made. I wouldn't go full NJS though, just to better suit my tastes. I get a 57 or 58 centimeter purple Samson with a light gold flake under the clear coat. For the drivetrain, I'd fit it with my favorite cranks, Sugino 75s, and just to keep the Japanese theme going, Zen chain ring, Dura Ace Cog and Lock Ring, and Azumi Super Toughness Chain. For the contact points, I would not have of NJS drops because I've ridden them and they really suck for street use. Instead, I would get a pair of Nitto risers or if I'm feeling particularly saucy, throw on a pair of Nitto bull moose bars for that added manliness. And for the riser setup, I would run it with a Nitto jag. For the seat post, I'd go with a Nitto crystal fellow because it has some classic styling and it has clearly the best name for a seat post. And this may seem sacrilege on a Japanese bike, but 
I'd put on a Brooks Swift because I've been really liking that saddle. And for the wheel set, although it's not NJS, I would go with the trusty H Plus Sun TB14s laced to Suzu Pro Max hubs because they are sparkly and I think that they are just hands down the coolest hubs that you can get. And wrap these wheels into some fast rolling compass tires. If I'm building a new bike, which part should I consider buying new versus used? The stuff that you should buy new are the consumable components like tires, tubes, drivetrain, other than that, everything else you'll save more money going used. For a workout, is there a big difference between a fixed gear, single speed, and geared in terms of efficiency? A geared bike will be the easiest to ride since you can change to a more optimal gear ratio depending on the terrain that you're riding. In other words, they can be less of a workout in the same amount of time, assuming you're switching gears accordingly. A single speed can be much more effort than a geared bike because essentially you're always going to be in a suboptimal gear ratio. And the same goes for fixed gears. Fixed gears may be a bit harder of a workout because you can't coast. A brakeless fixed gear will be the hardest workout since you're always in a suboptimal gear ratio and you have the added effort of having to backpedal to stop. That means absolutely no resting and descents are harder than climbs. It depends on what you mean by workout efficiency and what your goals are. If you want to be the best climber, then a geared bike is the way to go. If you want to develop monster track thighs, then always pedaling in a really high gear ratio, whether that's on a geared bike or otherwise, is the way to go. Or if you just want to be the most tired in the least amount of time, you should probably just go for a run. The difference between the US market and overseas bike markets. The thing about being a cyclist in the US, you have access to pretty much any component that you want at pretty much the best prices. Choice and price has a lot to do with demand, and this is just my hypothesis, but the US probably has the highest volume of demand for mid-range and high-end bikes and components. And because of that, we enjoy the best prices and selection. This is just a super basic analysis, but because the demand is in the US, there's more companies to meet and profit from that demand, and with more competition comes more selection, and lower prices. Even here in Taiwan, where most mid-range and high-end bikes are made, prices for bikes are either the same or more expensive than in the US. Because the US enjoys much more efficient economies of scale for distribution. Of course, it's unfair to lump every country into the overseas market since every country varies drastically and every city in every country varies drastically. But in general, the US has the best selection and prices for bikes. I'm currently trying to sell my Surly Steamroller. I fear that I won't get what the bike is worth or less people will be interested because it's a single speed. Any tips on selling a used single speed bike? The best way to get your money's worth from a bike is to keep it and to use it. The vast majority of tangible stuff depreciates and that's just the nature of physical things. You use it, it's not as good anymore, so it's not worth as much anymore. If you want to sell your bike, you're going to have to accept the fact that you're not going to get as much as you paid for it. Think of the money that you're not getting back as the cost of owning and using the bike. You own the bike for however many years and rode it however many miles, and you're now paying for those rides in the form of depreciation. Selling on Craigslist will get you considerably more money than selling on eBay or another online platform, because online platforms usually take a hefty chunk of the sale. Parting out instead of selling the bike as a complete will get you more money. But it's up to you whether spending all that extra time and effort to part out is worth a few extra bucks. Your goal as a seller is to make the transaction take the least amount of time while giving you the most amount of money. Be honest and reasonable and know how much your stuff is worth. Post a lot of pictures and be very descriptive in how you cared for and used your bike. Weed out buyers that are potential headaches. Don't respond to anybody asking for a lower price if you know what you want from your bike. And don't respond to anybody that's just being negative. These people are flat out time wasters and are the most likely to not give you the amount of money that you're looking for and the most likely to just not show up. Patience is key. The hardest part about selling is waiting for the right buyer. You'll know who they are since they'll think the price is reasonable, they'll be polite, they'll ask a few questions, and they'll want to meet up as soon as convenient for both of you. Although the market is smaller for fixed gears and single speeds, the right buyer is out there and they'll think that your bike is a good deal and be happy to give you what your bike is worth 
assuming that you've been reasonable and honest in appraising your bike. How to not feel so sad when selling your favorite bike. My parents forced me to sell my leader fixed gear due to problems. Don't look at it as a burden, but look at it as an opportunity to make a sacrifice in order to serve your family, which inevitably makes you a better person. Bikes are just objects and they are 100% replaceable, but there's no substitute for doing something difficult in the short term for the betterment of you and your loved ones in the long term. Although cycling is good, serving your family is even better. It is a bit unfortunate that you had to choose between the two, but you made the right choice so props for selling your bike. Also think of it as making way for a better bike in the future. To put things into perspective, Leader was such a great bike company that they went out of business practically overnight because they weren't honoring damages on bikes that had a clearly flawed design. You deserve better than a leader, and this is the first step to making way for a better bike. Why is it that when I add up all the prices of generic components I need for a bike, it's always higher than a decent first time beginner bike? Man, y'all are really putting my degree to work today. Here's a baseline explanation. Generally, it costs the seller more to sell individual items than it does to sell all those same items in a complete package, i.e. a whole bike. Because it costs more for the seller, they have to raise the prices on individual components in order to stay profitable. There's a lot more that goes into pricing than just the cost to produce the good. Think of it as if you were selling your own bike as a complete versus parting it out. You'd want a good amount more money for selling individual parts because it takes a lot more time and effort to move that same volume of product than it does to just sell the bike in a nice convenient package. Complete bikes generally cost less to sell because they provide value to more people and are easier to sell. It's a lot harder to sell a basic wheel set, generic cranks, cheap handlebars, than it is to sell all those same components when they're functioning together on a complete bike because a lot less people are looking to buy those individual cheap components. Because they're harder to sell, retailers have to charge more for individual components as opposed to a complete bike that's more of a package deal. And if you wanna have your question featured in next month's Fix Gear Q&A, keep an eye out for the post where you can ask your questions, usually towards the end of each month. Our channel sponsor, Wabi Cycles, is the epitome of what makes cycling fun. Every one of Wabi's design choices are meticulously made to give you the purest ride quality for the money. And Wabi executes those choices perfectly with master craftsmen right here in Taiwan and a friendly bike shop in Denver, Colorado that is eager to answer your questions and get you on a bike that you'll love. This amounts to efficient, elegant, and timeless bikes that you can get from a passionate group of fellow cyclists. Wabi's relentless attention to detail results in Wallace, my 58 centimeter Wabi Special, weighing in at 17.5 pounds or 7.97 kilograms straight out of the box. That's well under 20 pounds for a completely steel, lugged frame set that has no carbon components. That weight isn't just for quoting and impressing other cyclists though. It results in the best riding experience that I've ever had on a bike with a snappy, responsive, and lively bike that only top shelf steel can bring. That pure fun makes it easy for me to ride Wallace my Wabi Special as my only bike as I travel throughout Asia. So if you're looking for the bike that could very well put an end to your search for the perfect bike, consider checking out Wabi Cycles linked at the top of the description because it really is the closest thing that I've ridden to the perfect bike.